board meeting. It's Wednesday, February 26th. Uh, call to order the meeting. Uh, we have a quorum today. Uh, I'll take a motion to approve the agenda as is. Second. Thank you. Any objections? We'll move on. Um, next are the minutes of the January 29th, 2020 meeting. I hope you've had an opportunity to review them. I know I have. I'll take a motion to accept the minutes. So we'll move. Thank you, Mike. Second? Second. Thank you, Denise. Any questions, changes, amendments to the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Approved. Uh, next is our recognition. Steve Carr. Yep, a little change on the fly. We were scheduled for two people. Um, one, one person couldn't make it, so we'll we'll go with the one star of the show. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> It's not, it's not too often that uh, an employee achieves legendary status at CBA, but I think it is, for a lot of reasons, uh, it, it is fellow has. Uh, Mr. Joe Fulu. <coughs> you got dressed up just for us. Just for you. <laughs> service legendary a legendary guy and I get like five bullets so I, I may have to make some of this up as I go you're going to do it anyway <laughs> Joe and I were talking Jack Rogan and Pat Lance uh, Joe's one of these people that Mike Prashone seems to know everybody in the community and that, that I think that's a great thing um, but we were talking about how many saves you get in life uh, you get a few, right? Um, Joe's had a few saves, right? A couple lefts, a couple rights, you know, maybe a couple of wrong turns. But, a lot. <laughs> um, but he, he always bounces back and bounces back on his feet. But before CDTA, um, Joe, it, it revolved around his, his parents, his mom and dad. Uh, they owned five dry cleaning stores. So Joe would often work for them uh, and help them. And when he was not working for his, for his parents, he was a print broker. That, that's perfect for you, Robert. Okay. Print broker, real estate, something like that. Sell, for sure. Uh, but it's, Mike got a hold of me. <laughs> yeah, well, Mike Collins is responsible for a lot of things. Here. <laughs> uh, I guess he'll take Joe Fulu. His career at CDTA has been all fixed route. Um, he started driving on the Quail Street Belt. For those of you that are familiar with what the Quail Street Belt is, it's um, up Clinton. Uh, down Madison, you know, and, and around and around and around. But it, it travels through a lot of interesting parts of the city uh, and gives you a, a really neat perspective on, on who we do, or what we do. Uh, today, Joe likes to change it up and, and drive a variety of routes. Um, but th and that's the one thing about Joe Palou. Um, you walk in here on a Saturday or Sunday, you're likely to see Joe uh, work. Like many bus operators, he's got a passion. Uh, for driving and operating unique vehicles, and with technology rapidly changing, so does the job on the road. However, to Joe, it's, it's really not changed much because he likes people and likes dealing with, with our customers. Uh, this was your favorite memory, I guess, and you, you know, so I've got to read it, um, so here it goes. Joe's favorite CDK memory was picking up a customer in East Greenbush, Joe did everything he could to assist the customer with her needs. He went over and above. And later he found out she was a secret shopper. So I don't, I guess I didn't find out what the rest of the story. No, I'm not going to tell you the rest of the story. <laughs> <laughs> I figured that it wasn't a happy ending. And I married her. <laughs> <laughs> time, Joe can be found screaming at the television, usually at the New York Giants. And it's usually at the Giants, not rooting for the Giants. Um, I'm glad to see that you didn't wear your giant coat today. I was struggling. It's I in the truck. Was struggling. He likes the, the, the coat, but I convinced that if he took it off and put it down, it would stand up <laughs> on its own. I've, I've offered to pay for the dry cleaning. Um, I do dry cleaning. <laughs> <laughs> the time is 
close for Joe, but not close enough. <laughs> he says three years, but but I think you get a feel for Joe. A really happy guy, a good guy, um, a, a fellow who, at the end of the day, you know, loves CDDA and loves what we're all about, and, and has always been um, here through thick and through thin, and everything in between. So hats off to 30 years, Joe. Thank you. So we'll catch up with Mr. Miller, who was due to be here, uh, hopefully next week. Well, uh, I will start off with the uh, committee reports by reviewing the uh, Board of Operations Committee that was held on February the 12th. Uh, there were no consent items uh, that came out of that uh, meeting. Um, we uh, reviewed the committee agenda that uh, we'll be walking through uh, this afternoon. Uh, we also uh, continue to develop the uh, key performance indicators to better monitor the STAR operating uh, results. This work is just about completed, and the committee will transfer several of the more important KPIs to be included in the monthly performance report. Uh, we talked about the strategic plan, which we expect to be with Barbara Gannon uh, towards the end of uh, March to discuss our progress and some direction to the plan, and we're still on target to complete by mid-year. Uh, we talked about several real estate matters uh, as we work to add capacity to our facilities and develop more amenities for our customers. And the next meeting of the Board Operations Committee is slated for Wednesday, March 11th. Uh, here at CDTA at 9.15 a.m. Uh, the next report is the Performance Monitoring Audit Committee. Denise Figueroa. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The committee met last week uh, right here at 110 Waterbury Avenue on the 19th. Um, and we have five items for uh, the consent agenda uh, this week. Uh, approval of the contract for fair boxes is the first one. We need new fair boxes as we get ready for the River BRT service, and our contract with SPX Gen Fair expired in 2018. There is no other vendor that can supply this product. Staff is recommending a sole source contract for the purchase of fair boxes to SPX. Uh, we need a motion to award a contract for the purchase of 27 fair boxes to SPX Corporation of Elk Grove Village, Illinois, for an amount not to exceed $331,207. Can I get a motion on uh, on resolution number six? So moved. Second. 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 Right, Any uh, questions or comments about this sole source uh, contract for fair boxes? Uh, just the only uh, uh, conversation we had at the committee was that normally we take the fare boxes from older vehicles that we're replacing and, and uh, put them on the new vehicles, but since we'll be adding vehicles, um, you know, we'll, we will need new fare boxes. Uh, if not, then I'll call the call, call for a vote. Mm -hmm. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any against? Any abstentions? That's approved. Okay. Our next item is approval of a contract award for fuel. Um, the, the staff monitors uh, fuel markets for future price opportunities, and recently the market price dropped, making it attractive to lock in a long-term fuel price. Uh, our supplier is Marabito Incorporated. Uh, we currently pay $2.30 per gallon, and our new contract on June 1, 2020 will see us paying $2.06 per gallon. A few weeks ago, the future market price dropped to $1.97 per gallon, which is when we locked in. This price is effective for one year starting in June 2021. Um, so we need a motion to award a one-year contract to Marabito Energy Products of Binghamton, New York, uh, for ultra-low sulfur, <coughs> sulfur diesel excuse me, at $1.97 per gallon and ultra-low sulfur kerosene during winter months at $2.28 per gallon starting in June 2021. Uh, the expected contract value is $4.2 million. Can I get a motion on the uh, contract with Marana? Second. 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 Take that as 
second. <laughs> any any discussion? Great great pricing, great work by everyone. No argument. No, I, but uh, but just to sort of bring us back, I, I think this is a, another example of staff and the board um, developing an innovative solution um, to, to address uh, you know, one of our larger um, line items in the budget. There's a lot of flexibility. We play within the rules, um, but use you know use them to our advantage to, to react very very quickly. You know, honestly, I can tell you that if we didn't react that day, um, prices had already the next day bounced back up. So, well, thank you for that uh, rope. I think the, uh, the, the the procedure works the way it was intended to work. But we're out now until 2022 <coughs> on fuel purchases. Nice savings for the organization. Yeah. No. Is our consumption level expected to increase or decrease or stay about steady? I'll uh, probably go years? up a little bit because we're adding a couple of services at least in the near term. Um, and, you know, who knows what the future holds? You know, the, another county, for example, joins the service district. Uh, consumption will go up again. So, <coughs> uh, you know, it locks in a certain you know, amount of gallons. We'd have to go back to Moravido and negotiate that. But I think, you know, if we were offering to buy more fuel, I think that would be received uh, positively. So we're not projecting any significant change with the electrification as of yet. No, that's only four vehicles. Yeah, it's not. I mean even uh, even so even if you had sixteen, it, it's it's also too soon to tell because then we'd have to we haven't done this work yet. We're doing it. You know, the question would be how much does your electric bill pay? Yeah. <clears throat> your electric bill's going to go up. We're hoping not at the same rate as the savings on diesel fuel, but we just don't think it's real. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Motion is approved. Okay. Mark is abstaining. Thank right. Mark. Our next item is approval of construction contract for the Wellness Center. Um, we're partnering with CDPHP to operate a wellness center for our employees. As part of this partnership, we will construct the center at 110 Waterbury Avenue. Uh, the center will provide wellness opportunities for our employees, including on-site physical, drug, and alcohol testing. Uh, an invitation to bid was issued to convert the training room into a wellness center. AOW Associates was the low bid at $119,699, which staff recommends. Um, we need a motion to award a, constru a construction contract to AOW Associates. Uh, Albany for an amount not to exceed $143,699, which includes a 20% contingency. I can make that motion. Okay, we have, we have a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Any discussion on this matter with Wellness Center here? Yes, Mark. And what, what are the services that provides you mentioned a couple? Well, uh, let's back up. First thing that the um, the wellness center will accomplish is a lot of this, the testing that goes on, uh, physicals, um, uh, blood work, things of that nature. That will all now be housed within the wellness center. But in addition, this is this is something that's really different. Um, really, a, a, a counseling center, a drop-in site, you know, where you can you can check on your health. You can um, say, I have my left arm. My right arm. My left arm, uh, the elbows, is, they bother me. You know, can you take a look at it. Take a look at it. I, I think you ought to, you know, go for X-rays. Uh, but really, what we're trying to do is uh, get employees actively involved in staying well. Um, that's really our objective. It's certainly CDPHP's objective. So, you know, all that will be built into the room. So, it's not an exercise room. It's not an exercise room. And any. Uh, Educational materials and healthy living. All, all of the above. All the CDPHP portfolio will be brought to the center. Very clear. It is not this. It, although it's in our building, it's the CDPHP wellness center, not the CDPA wellness center. We want our employees to be well, but we're not wellness experts. Who did the design? The design was by Sage Engineering and Springline Design. Um, Kristen Knickerbocker. It's basically the room that, you know, due south, the furthest south <coughs> that you can go in the building, uh, will bump out, or 
we're taking it now a, a meeting room. We're taking it and turning it into a, uh, a space suitable for this function. You know, it has to have just the testing, has to have uh, a facility, um, certain things that can and can't be in there. Uh, so all that is uh, included. It doesn't include all the fit-ups, um, and that will be done through CDPHP as far as you know, examining table, cabinets, uh, all that kind of thing, lighting, that's what it's going to be there. And did all bids have a 20% contingency? The bids did not come in with a 20% contingency, we added that. Um, so that was standard across the board? Correct. On your, on your year? It's it's internal, yeah, we had that internally. So I got just a week day. Um, I don't know what the schedule is off the get go, Mike. Is it really to be heard? <clears throat> Eventually, Pat, you want this to be open as much as possible. Yeah, absolutely. But I would see this being phased in. Let's walk before we run. So we will continue to have, you know, a facility. The drug testing goes on you know, seven days a week, so we'll continue to have that while, while we transition. This will happen over time. Jennifer, call the completions by May. Quickly, right, Jeremy? Yep. Uh, they're ready to go right away, so we'll have a kickoff meeting if and when this is approved and we get moving. We'll be looking at May. We're not talking about a lot of work. Yeah. Grand scheme of things. Conversation. Uh, any other discussion, comments? Seeing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Well, approved. We'll move on to the next item. Okay, next item is approval of the contract for a radio communications maintenance um, agreement. Uh, we need a new maintenance contract to maintain equipment for our voice and data equipment and equipment at our tower locations. Uh, the contract also provides a one time fee to decommission obsolete equipment at the tower location. Uh, Wells Communication provides maintenance and service on our radio equipment. The sole source agreement allows them to provide maintenance and oversight of our communication systems and equipment. So we are asking for a motion to award a one-year contract with four optional renewal years to Wells Communications of Troy, not to exceed $164,600. I'll move that. Second. Second. Any uh, any discussion? Yes, Mark. Would this enable bus to bus communication in the event that the passenger is trying to make a connection? The new system. The new system will. Yes. Great. Okay, this is uh, this is work primarily to support the decommissioning of the old system, but also helping to support the vehicle to vehicle uh, delivery. Yeah, in all transparency here, we talked about this in committee. Uh, I find it's kind of interesting. You know, we pay Wells Communication to put the towers, the old towers up. We're paying Wells Communication to take the old towers down, essentially. In, in layman's terms, that's what's going on here. Any other questions? Keep paying. Always. All those in uh, favor of the resolution, say aye. Motion, please. No, we didn't. We did. uh, yeah. I, I made it in my second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? That's approved. Okay. And our last item for motion uh, <laughs> is approval of a resolution to accept state funding. Uh, the state requires a board resolution to execute a grant <coughs> agreement with New York State DOT to accept $5.4 million. Uh, these funds are used primarily for bus purchases. Um, so we need a motion, uh, uh, we need to approve a resolution to accept $5.4 million. <coughs> New York State DOT. So moved. <laughs> 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 Who's gonna second, second, second by Mike. <laughs> Any uh, discussion about this? Could you just try to talk? Thank you for the money. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. Resident wise guy asked, what would happen if we didn't ask for <laughs> We should all be fired. That's <laughs> what should happen. We resign. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? It's approved. Okay. Um, we 
had no audit committee uh, report uh, and no investment committee report. Uh, we had two, if three, administrative discussion items. Um, first was the risk management and workers' compensation quarterly report. Amanda Avery provided a quarterly review on the adequacy of the risk management and workers' compensation self-insurance accounts. Um, the committee determined that both accounts are adequate at this time. Questions on that. Um, the monthly management report, Mike Collins gave the monthly management report for January. We continue to be in a solid financial position through January. Year to date MRT receipts, uh, mortgage reporting tax, remain strong at $825,000 over budget. And customer fares are more than 3% ahead of budget for the year. Our total revenue is up 3% for the year and expenses are down 1.2%. <coughs> We made an administrative adjustment to our wage and health care lines. Uh, since year-to-date wages are 3% over budget and health care is 10% uh, under budget, we moved $650,000 uh, from the health care line to the wage line. Um, the overall budget is not affected by this adjustment. Any questions on that? I mean, financially, we're in pretty good shape yeah. right now. Um, Okay, and then the non-financial report, uh, Lance Arcone gave the uh, monthly non-financial report for January. Our total ridership for the month is up 6%, down 1% for the year. Uh, preventable accidents are at 13, and non-preventable accidents are at 39. On-time performance was at 71%. Star ridership was up 10% for the month and 9% for the year. Our star reservation calls were at 13,410. And that concludes my report. I think, though, you made it a point that he was not taking credit for the sweethearts. <laughs> right, <laughs> right, right. Very good. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Denise. Anyone have any uh, questions about the recent committee meeting? <clears throat> now we'll move on to the next item, which is the committee report for. Community and stakeholder relations. Uh, I will provide that uh, report. The meeting was held on uh, February 20th. Uh, there were a few presentations at the meeting. Uh, Jonathan Scherzer provided a report on our customer comment process and how CPTA captures its comments through ASTIS, a database that allows customer service representatives to track and monitor uh, comments. Uh, John explained how the comments are received, recorded, and assigned uh, to the appropriate department. Very interesting presentation on how that's handled internally here at CBTA. Uh, Jamie Watson provided her uh, monthly report on community mm -hmm. engagement. In total, CBTA had 20 earned media placements in television, newspaper, and radio, with uh, many of the stories focused on uh, the flex rollout, microtransit service, uh, federal money received for the FTA for the River Corridor. Uh, project. Uh, she also outlined the focus <coughs> projects and goals for CDTA's communication and community engagement activities over the next several months. The next meeting will be held on Thursday, March 19th, 10.45 a.m. here at 110 Waterbury Avenue. Anybody have any questions on that committee report? If not, we'll move on to Mike Crescione and the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee. Thanks, Jamie. Uh, the Strategic and Operational Planning Committee met last Thursday, February 20th at 12 p.m. here at 110 Waterbury Ave. We have uh, two consent agendas uh, items for the board today. First being to authorize the Washington Western BRT financial commitment. Uh, the Washington Western bus rabbit transit line continues to be progressed through the Capital Investment Grant Small Starts Program. The key step of the process is documenting that we are committed to funding the non-CIG portion of the project. This is a requirement for FTA staff to recommend the project for funding to USDOT administration. The Washington Western BRT project under Small Starts is currently estimated to cost $81.2 million. This is split between 60.9 million, 75% from CIG Small Starts and 20.3 million, 25% from non-CIG sources. Prior to the FTA Risk Readiness Review Workshop, evidence of CDTA's local financial commitment is required via board resolution. 
We need a motion to approve a, res a resolution that establishes CDTA's non-CIG local financial commitment for the Washington Western Bus <coughs> Traffic Transit Project, and that staff be authorized to submit the resolution to the Federal Transit Administration. So, second. Motion, second from the leaders. Any questions about this? Well, we have had a long discussion about this, um, and we certainly don't want to be flip on eighty million dollar grant application. But this is is a required step. Uh, we done this. We did the same thing with the River Quarter BRT, and it was a different grant program at the time. But we did the same thing with the uh, BRT County Five, which you know, is connected. But we're demonstrating that we are committed to the project as as an organization. And we're demonstrating that we are we understand that there will be a local match. What that local match ends up being at the end of the day, um, you know, will it be 25 percent? Probably not. Uh, will it be more? Uh, perhaps. Um, uh, you know, the, the, the River Quarter BRT is is, is, uh, is a more local match than 25 percent, uh, and that's where it appears the Federal Transit Administration is going. Uh, the more local match, the better. Makes sense, I guess, um, from their perspective. Um, we have accumulated a significant amount of local match. As you know, there's a CDTC set side. There are state uh, programs that, that we rely on. And, and it's always changing, right? So we're always bringing to you, you know, a new update. Um, so, you know, Ross, about every six months, is providing an update. Here's where we are. Things have changed. We want to move this around. So it's the best estimate at this point in time uh, because the, uh, the, the FTA staff is ready to be in here uh, late spring uh, to do another project rating, which will hopefully come out well and advance us to the next step. It's just it's a series of steps in this, this program. So uh, good discussion about that. But in a nutshell, that's, that's what we're asking the board to do is commit to the local share. Necessary step forward to go on this project. Can't, any questions? Seeing no, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Approved? <coughs> all right. Let's go. Our uh, second item is to approve the Rensselaer Rail Station parking rate hearing and recommendation. <coughs> uh, parking rates at Rensselaer Rail Station were last increased in April 2013. At that time, we agreed that they would be reviewed every few years. The new proposed rate structure is projected to yield about 400000 annually in additional revenue. The system and policy for the new rates were provided in December and again this month at committee for review. We held a public hearing on January 29th to give customers an opportunity to comment on our proposal. We also accepted comments over the phone via mail and email through February 15th. There were two speakers at the public hearing and we received 19 written comments. Uh, most of the comments were against any increase and a few supported the proposal. All comments will be included in the public record of the hearing. Uh, we need a motion to approve a change in the parking rates at Rensselaer Rail Station as described the new rate structure would take effect on or about April 6, 2020. We get a motion on this resolution? So moved. Second. Any comments or discussion about it? Let's talk quite a bit at that committee. Yeah, that's another one. Um, it's a formal process that we have to go through whenever we modify rates, whether they be you know, rates on our, our buses um, uh, <coughs> or rates at the, at the facility in, in Rensselaer. Um, and the board, a few years back, had said, let's revisit this on, on a regular basis, uh, rather than just randomly uh, you know, deciding to visit it. And you know, Let's make good business decisions. Let's uh, review where uh, our rate structure stands in, uh, in relation to other similar, similar facilities. We did all that. We found that um, we were a little on the low side. We also found that some consolidation uh, would be in order because we had three different rates, depending on where you park, and it's a little bit confusing. Uh, so all that's done. Uh, what we did talk about in committee, I think at length, and, and staff is in the process of doing this, it's probably time for some technology uh, upgrades um, at the parking facility, how you pay, 
uh, sort of the combination of payments, all, all of the above, and that uh, will be uh, moved forward in the next several months. So we realize that you know, it might be time to, to, to automate, you know, to modernize and, and or automate the payment system to be a little more effective for us. With the Easy Pass too? All or of the above. Yeah. About that? Yep. Yep. Easy Pass, uh, license plate uh, recognition programs, all, all of the above. So we're going to look at that, how much does it cost, and come back uh, and talk to the committee about that. Last rate changes were when? 2014? 2013. Well, we have a lot because we were under construction. Yep. So that, yep. that's what pushed yep. us back a little bit, I believe. Yep. In fairness. And there's still a little bit of work going on. We held off as long as possible. You know, some people were inconvenienced in the uh -huh. garage. They didn't think it was appropriate. Right. While they're inconveniencing customers, asking to pay more. So, again, you know, uh, some of the news stories are used to percentages. It's a little unfair when you're raising rates a dollar or two to now start applying a percentage because it does look like uh, you know, a percentage that is quite the increase when in fact it's a dollar. Again, we're percentage not... basis over seven years. It's exactly. A... Yeah. Uh, we don't want to trivialize it. We understand yeah. that. It, you know, it's, if you raise a rate, it's going to impact people, and it's 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 hard to ask people to pay more. But we think that the, um, the, the facility is is modern, uh, uh, clean, efficient, safe. Uh, it's everything that we promised it would be uh, for those of us that remember 2002, uh, and we we've, we've done our best to uh, keep it that way. And I think our, our maintenance program um, keeps the building and the facilities operating efficiently and, and better. I think we, we, we also acknowledge that we'd like to do more things and make more, add more services, and that's in process. What was the tone of the positive feedback? John, you think that people were satisfied with the station, they understood the reasoning behind it, also tied to what we're discussing right now. They'd like to see the improvements, easy pass comes up, and, and those kinds of things. So the support was, we get why you want to do this, let's make sure we do it the right way. <laughs> Comments or questions? Just, one. just a comment, as I mentioned at the committee meeting, this, this uh, hasn't been raised since 2013, so the amount of the increase is cumulative for seven years. The largest percent increase is 42%, uh, which comes to 6% a year, which is not that much for a lot to be. <coughs> Bring it up at the same rate as for the other line. <coughs> and you know, that's not an unreasonable percent increase considering that we have to do a lot of work at the uh, rail station and we're going to be introducing the technology. Yeah, just to refresh your memory, it's a several million dollar investment for facilities uh, to get them to where we want them to be. Now, most of that is not visible. <coughs> Sort of like a lot of the things we're doing, a lot of our BRT improvements, for example, there's millions and millions of dollars being invested in, in infrastructure that, to the naked eye, what does that have to do with transit? But it, it, it's sort of all part of the process. So sometimes, you know, you're making improvements um, you know, to your basement, uh, and you don't see a kitchen, right? It's all part of the process. Anything else? All those in favor of the resolution say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Resolution is approved. Thanks, everybody. Yes. And uh, we had one administrative discussion item, uh, fiscal year 2021 budget. Uh, Mike Collins provided an update on the fiscal year 2021 budget. It is shaping up to be an exciting <coughs> year as the budget is being driven by two major new services, a microtransit pilot and the launch of an employee wellness center, as we've discussed. Since last month, we have de decreased the budget gap from $4.2 million to $2.6 million. Several options were presented to get a balanced budget. Expense options include reducing a combination of health care, parks, purchase transportation, and wages by $1.3 million. Uh, revenue options included increasing state operating assistance by 1.2 million, considering increasing the use of Section 5307 or using a combination of projected, projected budget surplus and or reserves. 
Over the next month, we will continue to refine expense categories and make appropriate adjustments. We will be active in our advocacy efforts and working with our lobbyists and state association on increasing state funding. At this point, the estimated fiscal year 2021 budget will be approximately $98 million. Uh, there were no executive session items. The next meeting of the committee will be Thursday, March 19th, 12 p.m. here at 110 Water Fleet Ave. And that concludes my report. Right. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Anybody have any uh, questions about the committee meeting? Comments? Uh, start in the middle day just for a second talk about budget. Um, well, just thanks to everybody. It's probably been the most, um, let's say, engaging discussions uh, that we've had on budget um, in my recent memory, a recall. Um, and, and the nice thing is, even though you know we still have some issues to resolve, we have options. So we can we can sort of take a left, and if that doesn't go the way we thought it was going to go, we have some options. Um, you know, they're not perfect options, but um, you know, because we're increasing the size of the budget, you know, by almost ten percent. So I mean, it's, a good, it's a great day. There's all these great things happening. You have to spend money, right? To Make money, I guess, in transit's kind of a funny thing, but for us, the closest thing you can get to making money. Um, and these are all great things that we've talked about doing for some time. Uh, and we're really happy that we get to do them, but you know, now we have to pay for that. Um, so I, I, I just want to thank everybody. This has been, we're not there yet. We're not there yet. Um, but I, I think we're, just, we're pretty close. We're going to be okay. Next month, we'll deal with that. Uh, next item on the agenda is the CEO report. Yeah, thanks. We already uh, started in the middle of uh, my reports in your packet. Um, you know, sort of as part of that budget discussion, you know, every year we've been doing this now for several years, we present a state of the CEPA uh, event. Um, I'd like to tell you that we invented them, but we haven't. And, you know, it's, it's pretty popular in, in city and state government to do a state of the in the organization. I think it's good for us. It's healthy to, to sort of go back and revisit what you've accomplished and, and talk about um, you know, where you want to go. And in fairness, you know, we've been so active in the community, I think we owe it to the people who support us to make an annual report to them about what we're doing. And, uh, it, was, it was a great event. It was on a snowy morning, which kept our crowd down a bit. But we had about 100 people uh, assembled in our garage. Uh, Jamie Watts is not here today, but she and her, her team you know, turned the garage into a presentation center. I mean, I'm not quite sure how they did it, uh, but they did it. Um, it was comfortable, it was attractive, and, and for us, we got to show off uh, the facilities and our vehicles, and I think that kind of makes the show uh, even better. So uh, that was great. And, and for you, those of you that weren't there, we had a special segment um, where um, you know, these two guys both talked to me and said, hey, listen, I don't want to be perceived as the old guy or dinosaur, but they're not because they're two of the most you know, innovative people I've, I've met. And two guys who've had you know, an impact on my career. Um, Dave Sacro, um, you know, the longest tenured board member in the history of CEPA, and Dennis Fitzgerald, the longest tenured uh, chief executive officer uh, at CEPA. And they just gave a little perspective on where we came from, and a little perspective on some of the ups and downs and you know, some of the issues that they navigated the organization through. And, you know, the common theme, both of them, the common theme was the people, <coughs> the people who work here. Um, you know, they didn't rehearse. I know they didn't talk to each other. Um, but, you know, it was evident that they both viewed the organization uh, in the same way, you know, as the people who work here. So, uh, in my mind, that was that was really neat. And uh, to hear from, you know, those two guys who I respect a lot, um, sort of put everything into focus. Uh, Jamie mentioned strategic plan. I think we've zeroed in on a date. Uh, I'm going to try to meet with Barbara Gannon. I have to check with her. Um, uh, the afternoon of the next board meeting, uh, March 25th. We're in really good shape. Uh, we've been collecting a lot of information, a lot of data that you know we've all talked about. We talked about in our first meeting. The leadership team, the, the, the groups that were broken out, uh, have been working on it. Uh, we've even managed to come up with a different way to talk to customers and get their information, prospective customers. John uh, Scherzer and um, people at Pathfinders have been using some new tools. 
We're really able now to dig deep into what people think about us, what they think we ought to be doing, and how we ought to be doing it. You know, we're, doing, we're in the middle of an employee engagement survey. Uh, Kelly and, and her team are leading that. So it remains to be seen what we get from, from it, but you know, it's you know, intelligently you know, derived questions about why is it you work here, what do you want from, from CDTA moving forward. So we're going to have all that input. I, 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 we don't really have the results yet. We have you know, sprinklings of things from <coughs> different groups. I, I, I think you'll be, you'll be uh, interested to say the least. Um, at, at the uh, State of the State, we also unveiled our 50th uh, <coughs> anniversary logo. We turned 50 um, on August 1, and, and, and Jamie Watson built a, a bit of the presentation uh, into that. We've talked about the budget work. I think, I think we're moving ahead uh, pretty well. Uh, as Denise reports, uh, the current year budget is in, is in very good shape. We've had a good year on the revenue side. You know, while we you know, always control expenses, so we'll be able to have some, some wiggle room uh, as we move from this year to next year. It gives us, it gives us the ability to have another option, uh, so that's great. Uh, we also you know, talked about lobbying and advocacy. I point out that the, um, the uh, New York State Transit Association Lobby Day, uh, they call it Transit Awareness Day, is March 10th down at the Capitol. Um, the, the big events are in the morning. Um, if, if you if you want, take, take a look at the website, but if you want to attend or want to be registered, let us know. And then a group of us will, will be attending the Aptus Legislative Conference um, the weekend of the 15th through the 17th. Um, I think I think it's Aptus' best, best um, couple of days. Um, they always put, put together a, a top-rate program. You know, a lot of people from Capitol Hill uh, come down to talk with us. It would be very interesting to see what they have to say about an infrastructure bill because it's sort of been fun to watch the ups and downs of talking and thinking about it. And they might, you know, I think everybody realizes, I think universally, that it's needed, um, but it's unfortunately unable, we've been unable to obtain this. How do you pay for it? Because it's, uh, I know uh, universal health care and things like that are big ticket items, so is infrastructure. This is not going to be cheap. Uh, if we're going to do it the right way, but we all realize that our infrastructure is not in good shape and it needs attention. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Um, we talked about Plex continues to, to really do well. Um, you know, we're, we're averaging more than 75 people a day. Uh, we're learning as we go. This is completely new to us, but it's, it's apparent that we have something on our hands, right? Uh, and what we do with it, I think, at the end of the day, will end up being a calling card. We have another pilot set to go in southern Saratoga County. The, i got to tell you, the reaction from people in Saratoga County uh, has been unlike other uh, services that we've started uh, or tried. Um, there's more of a sense of engagement, I think, with this one. You know, let's work together because we don't have the answers. We, we don't know how it will look and feel. So um, I think, you know, we do know that um, less densely populated areas are, are good targets for this kind of service, and we've struggled in less populated areas or densely populated areas. It's just not been something that you know, a small mid-sized system like ours has been good at. You know, honestly, 40-foot buses don't necessarily cut it. You know, when the densities are, you know, half of what you know, they might be in <coughs> downtown Troy. So, so it's obvious that we have something. How we move forward with it play with it over the next few months will, will, will be interesting. But we'll, we'll continue to report on that. Um, and then, you know, my activity report is, is what it is. Um, it's the stuff that I used to say I'm good at. I think it's just, I, I like doing it. Um, I'm not sure exactly how good I'm at it. But uh, it's a team of people here. Um, you know, what you see on you know, my couple of pages is usually replicated or duplicated or tripled by other people in the room who, you know, are on, you know, we do everything here and we support people. We want them to be active. You know, if they have a club that they want to be part of that has something to do with who we are, um, we encourage them to do it. Um, if they want to be a little league coach, we encourage them to do it. If they want to be, you know, leading a Girl Scout troop, we have, you know, we say, well, at the end of the day, what does that have to do with CDTA? Well, you know, they find out that that great coach of the softball team uh, works at CDK. 
to find out that that Girl Scout or Cub Scout leader was the city kid. So it all kind of, in my mind, weaves itself together. What you see on my list is four or five times that going on. But another good month. Um, March, March, March is this week, next week. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Um, and we'll see you all uh, along the way here. Thank you, Carr. Anybody have a, any questions for Carr? Stump the CEO. Yes, Mark. That's all right. I did that this morning. I was stumping the staff all morning. I, I noticed on the bottom of page 43, um, year-to-date surplus is two and a half million. Does that get rolled over into next year's budget? It's one of the options. Um, and that will be presented uh, at, well, actually, we'll talk about it again at the planning committee. We'll kind of, I guess, you know, speak up on what have been involved. Like, I guess I'd call that one of the probably last options on how we roll that over. Again, and we'll, you know, where we roll it, do we roll that? Take more 5307. Do we put that into into reserves, or do we just directly put it in the budget? I think we've talked about every one of those, and probably then some. It's nice to have it, for sure. Yeah. Better than the other way around. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> and we had years. For the, other way around. the other option, Mark, would be we would use it to put into the capital program, right. especially with the need that we're going to have coming up, electrifying the fleet and all the all the need for that. So. If we don't need it to balance the budget, then that's where it would go. Uh, Mike's concern is that if we use it to balance the budget, it's a one-shot plan, right. and we need to fill that hole a year from now. Whereas if it's capital granted, it's gone once we spend it, but at least we're investing it in an asset that we'll get more life out of. You know, one of the things that we don't talk about a lot, because I think some people just assume, well, some people know it. Some, I think we assume that others do, and maybe they don't. The 307 program, as it was designed, is not an operating uh, program. It's, it, it was designed to be a capital program. This 5307 federal mm -hmm. you know, our, our allocation, which is formula based. It's based on population, transit, right. ridership, something else, miles, density of population. Right. So it's, there's a formula that's intended to fund your capital program. Um, so when we move over 60, 70 percent of it to operations. You know, people at the FDA say, okay, you can do that. You know, there, there's a limit on what you can do there, but there's a, okay. But, you know, the kind of, when you come looking for capital money, it's sort of like, well, you had it, you moved it. Um, but one of the reasons we have been able to do that is because New York State, in the last several years, has provided capital funding, knowing full well and actually encouraging us to move more of our federal capital money over to operations. It's kind of a double-edged sword. In you know, a perfect world, we could you know, move very little of that capital money to operations and you know, have a local fund source uh, that would pay for a lot of operations. But 5307 is really a capital program, not an operating program. And they let us, they let us move that as long as we use it for preventative maintenance on capital assets. So it can't just be used for any reason. It's got to be used to maintain a capital asset. And I'd say they're good about that, but every three years, every three years we have to face up and go through our triannual and show that, you know, we can point to how, you know, where that's a, a maintenance expense, so to speak. All good, though. Very interesting. Anything else from anyone? Any other comments before we close? We have no uh, executive session today. Uh, the next meeting is a month from now, Wednesday, March 25th, 12 noon, right here on 110 Florida Lee Avenue. If there's no other business, so uh, we'll see if a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Second. All in favor say aye. 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 We are adjourned until next month. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you.